speaker is Andre Pika and Andre Minister. The course material for the chosen is uh, first semester, is basic design and visual arts. It's page to 12 on the document. Where is it? Where is ours? Yeah, try video. Yeah, video and video. Basic design. Yeah. Uh, we're going uh, down back to first year after um, a good discussion of, about professional practice. So it's, it's quite a shift for my mind to jump back from uh, the year before you get into the, into the profession to the first year when you actually come in to college and you're introduced to design for the very first time. Uh, it's an exciting period for students because uh, for the very first time you're sitting and grappling with issues of materials and uh, uh, new ideas and exploration and uh, when the mention of ba basic design comes up, uh, one conjures up a picture of a very vague abstract course where we are going to flounder through together with our students. And what do we do then? We go back, we take recourse course in the syllabus and the syllabus is a structured uh, proposal which evolves from a very specific kind of design pedagogy which may have limited applicability today. Uh, our new course now, architectural course, now comprises of eight semesters as against ten semesters of the past. Um, personally, the two of us feel that it's, really going, it's a really difficult time to condense everything into eight semesters, which means that our basic design course is restricted to just one semester. More often when we take a design studio at levels of semesters five and six, which are more than halfway through the course if it's an eight semester course. We find that students are more, almost always lost with regard to where and how they actually begin designing. It comes to us as very disconcerting when even methods of exploration and experimentation don't seem to come easily. We think the purpose of basic de design course is largely an introductory foundation course that needs to evolve in our architectural educational institutes, uh, specifically according to where that particular institute wants to go with it. Uh, we'd like to look at existing design pedagogy that informs the, the present curriculum and, gen and generate a discussion uh, to, to bring about a new uh, framework and a new curriculum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the program as it's been given to us. Uh, we have basic design, contact periods six hours per week. The progressive marks of 50. We're not going to get into the marking at this point of time, I think. Uh, we do feel that, of course, six hours per week, I think, compares fairly closely even with the studio, uh, the design studio that they have. Uh, and the outline that they have given is introduction to the design elements, line, shape, texture, color, introduction to design principles, contrast, harmony, rhythm, proportion, unity, application of design principles in two-dimensional and three-dimensional compositions, Freehand drawing, use of various drawing and sketching tools like pencils, ink pens, charcoal pencils, etc. Exercises in freehand drawing, introduction to painting, color theory, exercises, introduction to sculpture and different media and sculptural exercises. Uh, the basic design course proposed here, it's already in use in many design and art schools across the world. Uh, its origins are from the four course put, put together by Johannes Eaton at the Weimar Bauhaus, the first Bauhaus, from around 1919 onwards. This has been refined uh, over the years, Molinagi, Kandinsky, uh, a lot of people have worked on this and, and refined it. It attempts to introduce a, a, a so-called scientific framework in the pedagogy of design by proposing a system of basic elements and laws of design with universal applicability and the method of, of apparently exploring this was through playful experimentation. Uh, now the four course which was uh, put together by Itin was then later taken up and uh, moved on to the, the, the Hope School at Ulm uh, which uh, was brought over back to India uh, and it's part of the foundation course uh, which actually is the foundation course at the NID. Uh, it, it also went across to the IIT uh, when Mies went, uh, went across uh, around the 30s and uh, eventually went uh, around the rest of the world. So uh, the basic design course as we see it today in most schools across the world, art schools particularly, is actually has its origins back in 1919 
when uh, the reasons for this to come up was, was a kind of a response to the existing uh, art conditions at that time and evolved from uh, a lot of interest in, in uh, German expressionism and other things which I won't get into right now. Yeah, uh, the, the basic foundation of, of this kind of an idea is a set of axiomatic assumptions and uh, uh, largely being one of the elements and, and be of the rules that kind of govern the way they are put together. So according to Kandinsky for instance, simplest ones are points, lines and planes. In three dimensions there are corresponding spheres, cones, cylinders, pyramids. Moholy Nagi added to these a few biotechnical elements, crystal, plate or strip, rod and screw or spiral. These are, however, only a beginning of the systematization of design. Eaton had early devised a method for arranging such diverse had early devised a method for arranging such diverse materials as fur and feathers into a scheme of textural categories, plotting them as points along axes such as hard, soft, rough, smooth, and so on. These categories became further elements of design. This atomic, we call this an atomic approach to design, envisages that the elements come together according to principles of composition to create perfect design solutions. Uh, the basic issue with this is that it makes a huge number of assumptions which may or may not uh, in fact be testable and part of the criticisms of this whole system is that it leads to results which have inherent biases. Uh, I don't know if you can get into that too, probably might take a little time. Yeah. Think, so, uh, but yeah, basically what one is trying to say is uh, when you're looking at elements of, of design as points, lines, planes and restricting, restricting it to uh, what uh, our syllabus actually uh, starts saying that there are certain methods of understanding and um, appreciating design and appreciating art, then you come back to this very universal way of looking at art and when you're, looking at, when you're actually doing a course where you're, look, you're trying to uh, look at exploration and experimentation and then you impose a structure which is um, talking about this absolute manner of looking at art, uh, it kind of defeats the very purpose. Yeah. Uh, as Deepa was saying, the four course was also from the basis of the foundation course at the Ulm School, which is started by Max Bill and uh, uh, Otel Eicher. Uh, this is the Hochschule for Gestalto, uh, which also built on, on Gestalt theory. Uh, Gestalt principles of form perception have also been widely used in design pedagogy. They postulate that global and holistic processes determine how we perceive structure in the en environment. So these are some illustrative Gestalt principles, figure, ground, proximity, similarity, symmetry, closure. So these are most, most design, basic design courses over the world actually incorporate both the, the Bauhaus focus and the Gestalt. Which is what we do too, actually. Uh, we believe that fresh design students have not yet begun to observe the world around them and are thrown into playing with abstracted elements and forms when they come into college. Um, these exercises often lead to scaleless and repetitive exercises in pattern making, leaving students with questionable learning. That's our opinion. Uh, while the study of traditional basic design theory may be useful to describe works of art, they actually have very little relation with how these works are put together. The elements that we all we talked about just now are aspects of works of art but not parts that we can be put together. So you cannot actually, we believe one cannot use these elements and use this theory to put together design but perhaps to appreciate or to, to, to look at design they have a value. So I, we think that the relevance of the, the, the present course is, 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 is under question. Considering that the duration of the course is now only eight semesters, we feel it's necessary that the basic design course introduces the observation of the natural and man-made environment of the time from a designer's perspective and understanding of more complex design challenges of the real world and understanding that objects are inevitably parts of systems, of relationships, interactions and interdependencies and an awareness of the relationship between design intent and design solutions all of which were kind of missing in the present uh, basic design course. Uh, we quote from uh, Professor Rajan, who uh, was one of the um, founders of the way the NID is today. And uh, this is part of uh, an extract from um, a, 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 a 
talk he gave at a seminar paper he presented in 2005 on on uh, the teaching of basic design at the NID uh, now the NID uh, takes basic design very seriously and it has actually evolved into a foundation course for two years uh, in their entire uh, syllabus after which they go further into the rest of the the, the separate uh, disciplines that they uh, choose. Uh, so what he says is that we need to revisit the traditions of design learning and try to understand the role played by basic design and see how it could be woven into the process of inducting new entrants into the realm of design thinking and action. Design is taking on new meaning and it is increasingly being separated from the skillful base that was originally married to due to the tools and traditional processes that are a fallback of various historical stages of evolution in a large number of disciplines. Design is being recognized finally, and this I think is really important, has been finally recognized as being distinct from both art and science, and the search for educational processes that are distinctly design early may not be a misplaced sub pursuit. Because I mean, if you look at uh, the existent, existing uh, basic design course, uh, it is the basic design course that is used in art schools. And it's really uh, looking at the appreciation of visual art and not um, really um, evolved to uh, including design as, as a discipline. So we really need to look at the way um, uh, our basic design courses uh, evolve over time to suit our, um, our needs as designers. Uh, the other thing also is that uh, we, we believe that uh, we can actually put down uh, a broad framework but every institute really needs to look within itself and work on the basic design course for itself and the way it wants to go. Uh, so we'd like to just reframe the objective uh, in these words to encourage a critical orientation to design thinking and action. Uh, by critical of course we mean that everything must be open to inquiry and alternative viewpoint. Uh, I don't think we want to get into the definition of design because that would take forever. But, but basically by design thinking and action, we mean the process of observation and study of natural and man-made objects and systems, ideation, free exploration and development of personal skills and attitudes. Uh, we, we really feel that the position of the basic design course is to develop attitudes and, and an ability to observe, uh, considering that we are talking about first year students who are freshly into the discipline. And I think uh, they probably need to be made keenly aware of the need to observe. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're proposing a series of exercises which uh, are very, very broad uh, and I think need to be, uh, one needs to look at it in more detail and I think it would be presumptuous to uh, outline these exercises because it's, it's after all a very open-ended basic design course. Uh, one, one need to you know, actually detail it right now. Uh, so the first exercise we propose is, is really basically that of observation and study, getting the students out of their studios in an attempt to connect with society at large, both to bring the real world concerns into the classroom, as well as to help prepare students in the early stages of the design process where they are expected to identify meaningful design problems before setting out to solve them. Uh, so the first exercise we propose is selection of two natural objects or systems observation of the natural occurrence, relationships with environment, form and structure, colors and textures, functions, followed by sketching and visual representation in various media, followed by 3D modeling in, in any appropriate medium. Now this actually in a sense addresses what has been originally proposed in the outline, but not in a formal structured prescriptive manner. The idea is that we do the exercises in freehand drawing, we do the compositions, we explore colors, we explore intensities, we explore media, we explore all ways of working but without being prescriptive in any way whatsoever. Because this is the only way we believe that you can have free experimentation. And it also means that the knowledge you gain is as a result of a need that you felt when you were attempting to do something and therefore it is that much more real. So the same process would be repeated with the selection of two man-made objects or systems. And so we are proposing that each of these could be for a period of four weeks. So that also involves observation, uh, the situation in which those systems occur and the usual relationships with the environment, form and structure, colors, textures, functions and uh, going through the exercises of sketching them, uh, visual representation in various media, 
uh, and 3D modeling in an appropriate medium. It's another four weeks. And this, these things are going to be slow processes and we believe that's the amount of time that it takes in, in the first semester. Uh, the second stage that we think that we could possibly do is, is a material study. Now this is not the, the kind of material study that we are talking about with relation to steel structures, concrete, masonry or, or, or the, the supposedly the building blocks of architecture. What we are talking about selections of any two materials used in everyday lives. It could be textile, earthenware, terracotta, metal, stone, plastic, glass. But the idea is just to, to develop a designerly way of looking at things. And that you see the whole world as your playground and that you see everything as a substrate. So, so you study the, the properties of the material, strengths, the way it's used and you play with it in terms of sketching, visual representation and then you create objects. So that could be just the way uh, it, it, it joins with another material, the way the material can be multiplied, uh, the way it could actually be grow. Uh, these are ways in which one could actually uh, work with it. We could even look at a real life situation in which the material is used. Uh, the other thing we'd like to suggest is uh, in the first year, uh, in the first semester, we have a, a, a subject called workshop which is actually largely a carpentry workshop and we have a, a, another subject called building materials. Now if there was some way in which one could um, explore uh, both these workshops as being part of our basic design course where we could really explore um, material study and the other uh, other studies that we are doing as part of uh, those two workshops too you know and rather than keeping building materials as an alien uh, technical subject and not part of our exploratory design yeah actually we would welcome any other suggestions as to as to what are the components that could help create uh, i would say a, a, a designerly way of thinking yeah, so we'd like to, uh, another, another very uh, um, clear feeling we have is that uh, the basic design course is in a way too truncated and incomplete and we seriously look at if we could uh, stretch this over two semesters because uh, just ending this as a, a one semester course of six hours a week is really too way too little and uh, I don't know what we actually hope to achieve so either one does away with it all together or one extends it for another semester. Uh, I'm very serious about that. Uh, it, I would prefer to continue at least for two semesters and, and if possible integrate it with the other subjects which are there in the first two, year, first two semesters. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.